Amid the harsh deserts of the Middle East, where there's little more than rock, wind, and scorching sun, the people of Israel accomplished something that stunned the world. They carved over 12,000 kilometers of canals through barren land, creating an immense artificial river that channels billions of liters of water from the Mediterranean Sea deep into the desert to sustain life in one of the driest regions on Earth. But Israel didn't stop there. They went a step further, transforming that seawater into clean, drinkable water using advanced technology inside massive desalination plants. How does this almost otherworldly process actually work? Join Mandarin Tech as we uncover the story behind one of humanity's most ambitious engineering triumphs. For decades, Israel's southern Negev desert was practically lifeless, dry, cracked, and nearly impossible to cultivate. Summers brought temperatures soaring above 110 degrees Fahrenheit with only a few weeks of rainfall each year. Underground aquifers were slowly vanishing, and agriculture, the nation's lifeblood, teetered on collapse. Many families depended on water hauled by trucks from distant areas. Yet, just a few dozen miles away lay the Mediterranean, vast, endless, and full of undrinkable salt water. That contrast inspired one of Israel's boldest ideas. Bring the sea inland, pushing its waters deep into the desert. Launched in 2000, the Desert Water Project carried a staggering $3 billion investment. With it, Israel didn't just make seawater usable, it redefined what's possible in one of the world's harshest environments, forcing rivers to flow where none had before. Before a single drop could move, the desert itself had to be reshaped into a workable construction zone. Engineers began with high-resolution satellite scans, ground-penetrating radar, and thousands of wind readings to map the shifting dunes and locate areas stable enough to build on. Survey teams camped in the Negev for months, drilling hundreds of boreholes, some over 100 feet deep, to study the hidden layers beneath the sand. Every route marker was placed by hand, measured with centimeter precision. The canal's path had to avoid wind corridors where a single sandstorm could bury the work overnight. Hundreds of bulldozers then flattened dunes, cutting down high ridges and redistributing sand to low areas to create a balanced surface strong enough for heavy machinery. Each section was checked constantly for slope and elevation, ensuring perfect alignment across miles of open terrain. Conveyor belts carried away excess sand, while compactors pressed the top layers to form a firm base. But sand, by nature, is unstable, so engineers developed a clever trick. They injected water into the loose surface to help the grains bind together, forming a dense, cohesive layer. Long sprinkler arms sprayed controlled amounts of groundwater across the site, dampening the top several inches. Once the sand reached ideal moisture, heavy rollers compacted it, sealing air pockets and locking particles into place. The deep rumble of steel drums echoed across the desert as every pass turned soft sand into a solid platform. When the sun dried the surface, it hardened enough to support cranes, mixers, and supply trucks a durable foundation made from nothing but sand and water. With the groundwork ready, hundreds of excavators and massive dump trucks launched one of Israel's largest ever earth-moving operations. Each day, over 70,000 tons of sand and soil were removed across a construction corridor stretching nearly 250 miles. More than 1,200 engineers and workers rotated through grueling shifts enduring desert heat that often surpassed 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The canal took shape with a wide U-profile, roughly 150 feet across and 23 feet deep. To allow natural water flow without pumps, its slope was maintained at just one inch per 100 feet, an astonishing precision for such distance. Survey crews rechecked elevation every 160 feet, using laser instruments to keep the canal floor perfectly aligned. Much of the excavated sand was reused to build embankments up to 16 feet high. In hilly terrain, bulldozers carved the slope step by step, while low-lying areas were filled and compacted until the desired grade was met. Where the soil was weak, 
engineers strengthened it with sand piles up to 25 feet deep or by mixing cement and clay to prevent the ground from sinking. The project stretched across the Negev, dotted with concrete plants, repair workshops, and engineer camps. Under the relentless sun, long convoys of trucks moved in endless lines, a mechanical river carving the path for a real one. The excavation phase lasted for months, but in this environment, heat and dryness were only part of the problem. The sand itself was thirsty, capable of absorbing any exposed water in hours. Without proper sealing, the entire canal would vanish beneath the desert. That's why lining the riverbed became one of the most crucial stages of the project. First, the canal floor and slopes were leveled and topped with a thin layer of fine sand. Then, concrete panels about four to five inches thick were poured, each section measuring 16 by 10 feet separated by expansion joints filled with hot bitumen to prevent leakage and allow for temperature shifts. In weaker areas, an additional HDPE geomembrane layer was added beneath the concrete, secured with steel anchors and covered with a protective sand cushion. In total, over 220 miles of canal were lined, one of the largest waterproofing systems ever built in the Middle East. To protect the slopes, engineers planted vetiver grass and desert acacia, stabilizing the soil and reducing sand drift. From above, the canal looks like a shimmering silver ribbon slicing across golden dunes, a concrete artery ready to carry life through the desert. A canal of this scale isn't just a trench for water. It requires, you know, hundreds of supporting structures to handle transportation, flood control, and flow regulation. At the system's head, engineers built a massive regulator complex, where seawater or desalinated water can be diverted into the main channel through enormous steel gates. Along its length, more than 900 engineering components were installed, including bridges, spillways, siphons, culverts, and aqueducts that carry water across natural valleys. Whenever the canal intersected a highway or railway, New bridges were built to maintain traffic. And where it crossed natural waterways, cross-drainage conduits were added so streams could flow beneath the artificial river without disruption. From start to finish, the project represents more than engineering. It's a symbol of defiance against geography itself. In one of the driest places on Earth, Israel built an artificial river to turn dust into farmland and seawater into life. Every six to nine miles, distribution gates are installed to regulate the flow of water into smaller branches. Everything must work in complete synchronization, because a single fault, whether in a gate or a canal, could cut off the water supply to hundreds of hectares of farmland. After more than 15 years of construction, the canal finally entered its water testing phase. Engineers opened the gates at the Townsend Barrage, allowing water from the Indus River to flow gradually, section by section, increasing the discharge from 500 to 2,000 and then to 6,000 cusecs along the route. Technical teams inspected every segment, measuring pressure, checking for leaks, monitoring slopes, and recording any ground shifts. Each irregularity was fixed before the system went fully operational. When the first rush of water swept across the cracked, dry canal bed, the regions of Darabukti and Jalmagsi erupted in joy. Locals called it the day the desert came back to life. Wherever the water reached, celebrations followed. It wasn't just a current of water, it was a current of hope, the realization of a dream that generations of farmers had waited their whole lives to see. The day real water finally flowed across their land. Water from the Mediterranean travels through an artificial river that cuts across the desert, but it can't reach people yet, because it's still seawater, and in the desert, salt can be even deadlier than drought. Before it becomes a source of life for millions, it must pass through a smart desalination system, a chain of advanced technologies stretching from the coast deep into the heart of the land. Here, seawater moves through multiple stages, mechanical filtration, sand settling, 
oil separation, and then nanofiltration and reverse osmosis, where every salt molecule is stripped away, leaving only pure, drinkable water. Digital sensors continuously track salinity, pressure, and flow, automatically adjusting the system to ensure the highest purity. Only after passing through all these safeguards does the water enter the main canal, beginning its long journey across the Negev Desert. No longer seawater, but a lifeline for an entire nation built on determination and hope. Even though pretreatment removes large debris and sediments, seawater still carries fine particles and microscopic organisms. To prevent clogging the heart of the system, fine filtration follows. Inside massive tanks, hollow fiber membranes act as ultra-thin walls, blocking algae, bacteria, and the smallest remaining particles. But the critical stage happens inside the reverse osmosis units. Here, under immense pressure, seawater is forced through semi-permeable membranes, each pore hundreds of times smaller than a human hair. This invisible barrier allows only pure H2O molecules to pass, leaving behind salts, heavy metals, and trace chemicals. High-pressure pumps generate tens of bars of compression, transforming the salty mixture into a nearly pure stream. Yet, when the water exits the RO modules, it's too pure, almost empty. To restore balance, precise dosing systems add small amounts of calcium and magnesium to adjust pH and bring back a natural taste. Next comes disinfection. Ultraviolet light or ozone removes any remaining microorganisms, while a trace of chlorine ensures long-term safety through the pipelines. Every parameter is monitored in real time and lab samples are constantly tested. Only when every standard is met is the water pumped from storage tanks into the distribution network, traveling through underground pipes to homes, hospitals, and factories. It's a full cycle, where the salt of the ocean is transformed into clean, drinkable water, a true symbol of modern technological power. When the first stream of water crossed the Negev Desert, everything began to change. Not just the landscape, but people's lives. Land that once cracked under the burning sun started breathing again. Farmers who had fled the drought returned, pitching tents, driving stakes, and plowing their first fields in the sand. Water from the main channel of the National Water Carrier spread through a network of secondary canals, pressurized pipes, and drip irrigation systems a technology invented in Israel itself to save every precious drop. The project began in 1953 and took over 11 years to complete, costing about 420 million Israeli lira, hundreds of millions of dollars at the time. Once in operation, the system could transport up to 72,000 cubic meters of water per hour, carrying fresh water from the north all the way to the Negev. As a result, lands once considered hopeless turned into fertile agricultural zones. In the early years, tens of thousands of acres turned green. Orchards of oranges, vineyards, wheat fields, vegetable farms, and rows of date palms now stood where there was once only sand and dust. From above, satellites reveal a long green ribbon cutting across the golden desert. The Green Artery of Israel, a man-made lifeline connecting the countries north and south. The transformation extended beyond the fields. Villages were rebuilt, children had schools again, and high-tech farms rose where only dunes once stood. And that's the story. How Israel dug billions of tons of sand to create one of the world's longest artificial rivers. Are you amazed by the technology that turns seawater into freshwater? If so, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay tuned for the next video.